Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition match, this time between Cybernetic Pony and Vermind on Cataclysm Ridge. This is Shadow Fury CC3, your commentator, and let us begin. So, Vermind starting in the southwest corner of the map, and Cybernetic Pony starting in the northeast corner of the map, and Cybernetic Pony is going for CISO this time around. And if you notice, CISO also has the starting armory changed out for a starting importer. I'm not entirely sure what motivated that change, but, I mean, it's not terrible change. I'm just not entirely sure what motivated it, honestly. I can definitely understand what motivated the 3RP change. There was a lot of testing going on in the experimental mod, but, and also just, it eliminates a lot of the rush strategies that could come up. Though admittedly, it doesn't completely eliminate rush strategies in general, as we saw in the previous game. There's actually quite a lot of potential with rush strategies if you're, well, Really, there still is a lot of potential for rush strategy, especially with Grekum, but just in general. The opening 3 RP is just basically mean you don't have the option of sacrificing RP to rush strategy. There's some Vecure rush strategies that depend on it, the depot rush and such. However, the starting importer, I actually kind of like because it does mean for players who are new to the game. I've noticed a lot of players new to the game will build armories. They start with an armory and they'll just build another armory and they won't build anything else, which is something that isn't really afforded by an opening importer. You can't think, oh, well, this is what I have, I might want to rebuild more of those, because I know what this is. You have to build new things, because you can't... It's clear that you can't do anything with the importer, other than use it to build units. And so it kind of pushes players into looking at the build menu more. I'm not sure how well that'll work out in practice, since both of these players are very experienced, but I will be interested to see how that works out with newer players coming in. Anyhow, Quick rush strategy coming in from, or quick scouting rush from Cybernetic Pony, not rush strategy, nothing really focused on that. Vermind, very focused on economy. On Cataclysm Ridge, I don't understand. I seriously don't understand. Why is he going for economy on Cataclysm? Of all the maps he could do economy on, Cataclysm Ridge is really not a good choice. Like, there's there's not a whole lot going for it as far as economy is concerned. It's, it's a small map. It's, it's a little bit windier than Rooftop Showdown, which we saw last time, but not by much compared to its size. It really doesn't have a lot going for it by size. But apparently that's what he felt he needed to go for, so I guess that's what he's going to do. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he continues with that strategy after seeing this Echo attack. He probably will. Normally players will not commit to those attacks. And Cybernetic Pony get very quickly getting an armor, getting more special ops, very quickly expanding as well down to this, or yes, he is expanding Marine down to the southeast side of the map. So, Sour Knight Pony also going for economy, but not nearly as focused on his main base. Interesting, I suppose an interesting change from the even start is that it does mean, which is the term given to the fact that you're starting with three RPs like this, is that it does give players, they basically like you're starting at the two minute mark in the previous version of the game. So, it gives players a bit more freedom to build up more RPs or build up a base, although honestly it really doesn't give you that much more freedom. Given that the maps are actually... Oh shoot, I forgot to check if... I think this map is updated for the 60 LC thing. The maps weren't changed in the release version, but they were very quickly updated by, I believe, Crown Aberrant. No, it was Kitan that did it. Kitan went and ran through a bunch of the maps and updated their economies for this, and they should all be updated for the next patch when that comes out. But that will be whenever it happens to be. Oh, and Jerakun confirming that it is in fact a 60 LC map. It is correct. It isn't being... It isn't one of the older style ones. It's it's fine. So we're good there. That's good to know. I. So, as far as that's concerned, we basically don't have much more freedom. You don't have a whole lot more freedom when you're dealing with the... When you're dealing with it like this, it's a little bit tricky because you don't have that much more freedom. It seems like you do because, I mean, to an extent you do. You have more more money at, or more income at the start. You, don't, you aren't starting out with zero income or near zero income. You're starting out with income. But it's still, you don't have as much, you're still not starting out with income and resources. You you have as much income and resources as you would about two minutes into the game, or, sorry, less than that, about a minute into the game in the previous version of Akron. But regardless, players are going, at least in this game, it seems to be going surprisingly on this map, 
for an economy-heavy strategy. Nine RPs each, right in the first four minutes of the game. This is... This is kind of different. Admittedly, it will lead to longer a longer game in this case. Both players happen to be going for this. It's just that... I'm a bit curious that neither player really went for a powerful rush strategy, because you saw last game on Cataclysm Ridge between Cybernetic Pony and Monkuki that a proxy rush strategy can be very powerful, even with this even start setup. It's actually arguably more powerful because you have, right off the bat, your economy. So you have you don't have to spend the time pushing units in, you don't have to do all that attention stuff, it's focusing on your economy. You have a starting 3 RP set, and you can build from there. Therefore, I'm not entirely sure what the motivation is there, but either way, both players are going for heavily late-game focused strategies. I mean, at this point, Vermind already has a base set up without having built any units. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, definitely a bit more focused. No, he's getting a mech. He's probably going for a macrofab from there. He's not building a lot of infantry for attack. He's getting aerospace right away. Okay, that's odd. It's a really bizarre style of play. I mean, yeah, there we go. The Shin Tertius. I mean, both players are just going for. Well, I guess it does help. In fact, double check. No, Gate Tech has not had its price changed. That's one of the things in the experimental build that was changed. Gate Tech had the old 160, 120 price, but not in this case. Gate Tech is the same price as it, as it has been since I think version 1.2. So it's still very expensive, but. No, both players are definitely focusing on the late game. And a carrier coming up for Cybernetic Pony. This... I don't think I've... I can't remember the last time I've casted a game with a carrier in it. So I probably should go over what carriers can do. As the name suggests, they are transport units. They can carry other units. They are also extremely powerful attackers. They deal, I think, somewhere in the order of 40-some-odd damage per second. I'll have to double-check when I get it up, when it's up again. But I believe it's somewhere in that range. And that's ground and air. They only have 550 health, but that's still quite a lot for 8 ground standards. That's about the same health as pretty much any tier 3 unit. It's lower health than most buildings, but units in general have lower health than buildings in this game. So, let's see. Yeah, 44 damage a second. 44 damage a second against ground and 33 damage a second against air. So basically, it will kill a marine in a second. Or in two seconds, rather. Special Ops in about three seconds. And pretty much anything that Vermine has right now, like, these Zion Pulsers will go down within about six seconds. Granted, Zion Pulsers can do a lot of damage in six seconds. But my point is, the Carrier is a powerful unit. I'm a bit surprised that Separate Pony went for it this early. I think what he's planning on doing, however, is a somewhat forgotten strategy of crate stealing, which is where you use your carrier or gargantuan or inceptor, go into your opponent's base, grab their resource crates, and come out. Given the Cold Forge style of map design where you only have a few resource crates per base, this could actually be extremely powerful. I mean, you could take out this expansion and the main base's crates with one pass. Actually, you could take out all the crates that Vermine has occupied so far with one pass and still have a bit of room left. In case you're wondering, the capacity of a carrier is, as you can see, it's 60. That's in tiles. So, for example, the Q-Plasma crates, those take up nine tiles, or any crates take up nine tiles, three by three. Mechs take four tiles, two by two, any infantry is one by one. Most Becker units are three by three, I think the Shin Tertia is roughly four by three. But yeah, it's the number of tiles they take up on the map that counts. Vermine going for a very quick harassment on this, or fairly quick harassment for how quick this game has been. And the carrier going out, Cybernetic Pony, is going forward with this. I'm expecting, though I don't know offhand, but I'm expecting it will be Crate Steel. I don't see it doing anything yet, though. It's He's not looking from his point of view. From Vermont's point of view, it is... It's... Well, I have no idea what it's doing, because we he jumped away right before we could see what was happening. But once Cybernetic Pony gets over to it, we will know what's happening, but he's about two minutes down from where that carrier was doing whatever it was doing, which I assume is Crate Steel. But Vermont, on the other hand getting much more focused on actually building units, plural, as opposed to units, singular. Now this carrier, like I said, fairly powerful units on, on its own, but needs defense, needs support. The Zion Pulsers will be melting to it, but any air units coming up, any bunch of Teth Tertures will just tear it up. And he could easily afford the Teth Tertures to do that if he wanted to, Vermine that is, could afford these Teth Tertures 
if he so chose. He is instead not choosing to do that. He is choosing instead for pretty dedicated anti-ground. I guess he doesn't expect the carrier. He's going to see it coming pretty soon, but it's... Like I said, I don't... I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But I do expect this is going to be for Crate Steel. I don't think it's going to be for a straight-up attack. For that being said, the main base crates are basically done, so it's useless there. This expansion is somewhat useful, but not especially. And nothing is being transported in, so the carrier isn't being used as... An, well, it can't be used as an army deployment platform. There's no army. This is the only army there's been so far. Also, in case you're wondering, air units can be transported by carrier as well. They are very expensive, but they also are very powerful. And that's what I meant by very powerful. As in, well, okay, Shin Pulse is not especially tough. But still, three shots and it's gone down. And there's the Great Steel! Q Plasma completely gone for Vermine. But Vermine, on the other hand, is attack harassing the more familiar way of just dealing a bunch of damage and hoping it sticks. And I mean hoping it sticks, because Akron being Akron, you you really don't know if your damage is going to stick. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot that Separate Akron can do with this besides, you know, Carrier. Which is going to get rid of the Zion Pulsar in no time. Actually, much less time than I expected. I guess 44 damage a second is faster than I... Uh, well, okay, that Zion Pulsar was damaged before. But still. That Carrier? That Carrier. Oh, that's why. We're in Fast Forward, of course. So... Divide every time I've mentioned so far by two. Because we are on fast forward, and that's what I meant by m hoping it sticks. That Shin Turcher that was harassing is no more. And Vermind doesn't appear to be too keen on actually even being aware of that happening. However, this does delay the carrier, giving Vermind more time to get Q Plasma and also more time to prepare a defense for it. Which he's sort of doing. He's getting some Teth Pulsers, more Shin Pulsers. You don't see a lot of people build Shin Pulsers, and I'm a little bit disappointed in general that, but they are a bit of a low-grade Jack of All Trades unit. I personally think they're a bit priced out of their range. I mean, they're that's nine damage a second with 140 health, but you get all that for 8754, which is that's a lot of Q Plasma. The, the Liquid Crystal is comparable to other Pulsar class units, but the Q Plasma is easily double, which doesn't which makes sense for air, but Still, compared to other air you could get, it's not great. However, the carrier is coming as a Teth Searcher comes up. This is what I mean, because with air you get Teth Searcher or Shin Searcher, and those are much hardier and deal much more damage to their respective types that they counter. I, granted, I do like the Shin Pulsar, personally. I just... It does seem a little bit overpriced for what it does. The main thing that it does, on top of everything else, is it breaks shields. Now, Severing Pony does have the possibility of getting shields, but he's not likely to get Temporal Assault and Shield. And having that Shield Breaker is great to have, but it's kind of an on-demand thing. On its own, though, it's not great. I mean, the Shin Pulsar... Really... It's better to get Ted Turchers or Shin Turchers for whatever you need to deal with. I mean, the Shin... The Ted Turcher right there nearly got rid of the carrier, and... Well, did a lot to the carrier. Took out about 30% of his health, which... For the price, actually works out nicely. Because it started at 209, and now the Tetrature comes in, and the Tetrature brought it down to 65. That is about 30% of its health. For the cost, definitely worth it. And as it tries to escape, it's going to go down. There it goes. That carrier has gone down to a Tetrature taken out of Shin, in the pro or Shin Pulsar in the process. So for cost, Cybernetic Pony has taken out a, cube, a Liquid Crystal box. And it wasn't... It was actually fairly populated for Liquid Crystal Box. It was fairly new. So, he took away some potential resources for Vermine, but he lost about 300 Liquid Crystal and about 200 Q Plasma in that attack. He didn't really make it up. He made up a bit of it, but not as much as I'm sure he would have liked. A little disappointing, but Saturday Pony has, a, has probably lost that carrier. He's, that's in the unplayable past. He does not have it anymore. The Vermine definitely has something in a sort of an advantage, but I think it's pretty even right now. Cybernetic Pony has built some something of a conventional army in the meantime, getting a tank and a torn on, nothing huge. While at the same time, Vermind is building up mostly Pulsar class units, but still slowly but surely getting an army built up, and he had a stronger economy for the most part in that run. Cybernetic Pony having spent most of his economy on that carrier and lost it, 
was not the most useful. So at this point, Vermine getting a small advantage and building up from there. However, throw, nearly throwing away a Zion Pulsar, only getting saved by the Ted Thurcher. It needs to go back and heal up, and it is doing exactly that. Looks like a small hierarchy mistake, though, because Zion Pulsars can't attack air, so there's really no point in having it there. But it was anyway. And here we go, Cybernetic Pony jumping back to the 1240 mark, but 30 seconds down from Vermind, and he's not even dealing anywhere near as much damage as he did in the last iteration. Tornad nicely coming along the south side during the distraction of the Tornad to the north, but still, Cybernetic Pony is throwing away his units, trying to... Well, not really claws are back in the game. There isn't much to claw his way back to. His economy is still fairly healthy. In fact, he's got a stronger income than Cybernetic... Vermind does. Cybernetic Pony has... Well, his main base isn't huge, but his expansions are quite healthy. And he took the expansion with more crates too, so it'll last a lot longer. But... Vermind has more units, and more in the bank. He can do a lot more attacking with these. He easily gets skipped teleport on all these units, and I think he has done that. Or, no, he hasn't done that at all. But he could. He could easily get... He has it on the Tenth Torture, he has it... Nope, he has it on everything. He could very easily skip teleport right into Cybernetic Pony's base and teleport the units he has, and that would basically be game. Cybernetic Pony about two minutes down from here. He's getting a macro fab finally, which I expected that was what the carrier turned out to be. Or what turned out to be the carrier. The carrier... I still don't know why Cybernetic Pony built that, other than maybe Crate Steel. Not a bad idea, but still, let's... Carriers are risky to use well. And they need to be used supported. Vermind has gate tech. He has a slip gate. That's what he was waiting for. And I don't know. He might have enough to chronoport this. He has enough to chronoport at once. He should be fine for that. Getting it, if he gets it right, then he will basically take this game. There isn't a whole lot of Cybernetic Pony had in defense three minutes ago. Granted, that's a minute and a half down from where Cybernetic Pony is. But even then, not a whole lot. There's a Tornado and a tank. But compared to everything being thrown at him, I mean, three, three Zion Pulsers and Teth Torcher, Teth Pulser, Shin Pulser. Actually, wait, is that Shin Pulser? Ooh, you know what? He might not be able to chronoport these. And in fact, wait a sec. His slipgate's not here. Oh no! I think his slipgate got blocked off by this Teth Pulser. That's gonna be embarrassing once he realizes what's happened. However, it doesn't actually matter. He didn't even need to uppercut to take this game. That's the thing, is that even a straight attack is gonna do fine. Still a little bit embarrassing. I really hate when that happens to myself. I just You think you had a gate and then it gets blocked off by something or something else blocks it or block off gate tech completely. But, like I said, he didn't need to uppercut. Still, if he wants to, he needs to be more careful about that gate. That appears to have been the problem. We'll see. And he is checking and... No, it, he's not gone to the build point yet. Oh, he didn't have enough money to build it. Well, that's embarrassing. So that gate being echoed out, but the attack really shouldn't be. Oh, man, it really... I mean, okay, admittedly, that was kind of far in the future, but still, Vermine could go for a straight-up attack when he is now, and win. Or at he could have when he first attacked. He, at this point, is a little bit risky. But he pretty much could go for a straight-up attack and win. However, it appears to be waiting for... There we go, another slipgate. And from there, he's... Kind of up a creek without a paddle. He has 115 Q Plasma. He has three Q Plasma RPs. He will not have enough Q Plasma to chronoport these units. He will be able to chronoport two. Pick two. That's what he has. Bit of a shame. But that's. Like I said, he could have gone for a straight attack and won. And at this point, I still recommend that he goes for a straight attack. He still would win. At this point, Cybernetic Pony is very poorly defended. This expansion is a bit better defended, but overall, Cybernetic Pony is not that well defended. Vermind could take this game with a straight attack. Now, an uppercut would be pouring salt in the wound at this point. It would definitely do the trick if he could pull it off, but he doesn't have the Q-Blasm for it, and he won't get it anywhere near in time. He could build a few more RPs for it, or teleport a few more RPs into q plasma crates. Not doing so, doesn't have a lot of Q or Chrono Energy with which to do so, and he needs as much Chrono Energy as he can get to do with the Chrono Port once he ultimately is able to afford it. And at this point, he can Chrono Port, well, these many units. Nope, not even. He's, yeah, he's pretty, he's gonna be pretty small. He's going for, hopefully he's not trying to Chrono Port everything because he might screw up Hierarchy in the meantime. He, you gotta be careful when you're Chrono Porting units that you can't afford because 
if you don't turn apart the hierarchy leader and you'd use hierarchies to set up an uppercut, that uppercut will go nowhere. There is it's just not gonna happen. But it looks like he's trying to turn apart this small group here, most likely. Oh, come on. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, he looks like he's trying to turn apart this small group here. And he can't afford that. But he's not doing so. I'm a bit surprised. I don't know where that chronoport is. I don't know why it's not happening. However, Cybernetic Pony has gotten his own gate tick. He is getting gates of his own. I think Cybernetic Pony is going to take this game. He has a chronoport as well up here. Chronoport teleporter here. He has chronoport teleporter down here. He has tons of reduction. He's completely been making up lost ground after that carrier boondoggle. And he looks pretty ready to take this game. Now, Vermine has gone for an uppercut. It's... Looks like he actually chronified himself in the meantime. But he probably will be... F actually, no. He won't be fine. We can't assume we'll be fine. You have to move his units first. There we go. Move his unit, moving his units into a better position before that happens. The Shin Pulsar will still Chrono Frag, but everything else will be fine. However, the Shin Pulsar Chrono Fragging may be a problem. May cause some butterfly issues, but some damage to Saturday Pony's economy in the past. That is still useful. Once this blue time comes along, we will see how that affects things. And another carrier being built up. Note that carriers cannot be chronoported, but I believe they can be teleported. They cannot be chronoported, however, this is important. So Cybernetic Pony can chronoport everything else, but carriers cannot be part of his uppercut force. However, Cybernetic Pony's uppercut force is going to be somewhat undermined by Vermine's own uppercut force, having hit before. Now, with this, with these resources here, 887 to 139, Vermine needs to be building more RPs. He needs to be building Zion Veers, he needs to be building more RPs, he needs to be expanding, he needs to be getting himself built up so he can go for more Chrono Board attacks, and generally make use of that Chrono Boarding, build more units, and so forth. And it appears that Summoner Pony has definitely gone for an attack in the future. Doesn't have that Chrono Boarded yet, but... Actually, why does he have anything Chrono Boarded yet? He's... He's pretty reluctant to Chrono Board at this point. He's taking a lot of damage in the Total Pass, probably trying to figure out how much damage he can... Actually, he's probably just figuring out how much damage he's taken in the Total Pass, and thus how much he can actually afford a chrono board. Because Cybernetic Pony doesn't have a whole lot of money in the bank. He can't... He might not be able to afford to chrono board everything he wants to chrono board. But, nope, he is able to do so. He's lost this northern base, and that's about it. He lost the northern base, lost some of his main base. But, he still has this southern base here that will be built up fine. And in the process of losing a lot of his units, and probably losing the, losing the mech that built the chrono boards up here, he's gained resources. So Cybernetic Pony still in a good spot. Vermin, on the other hand, in a tough spot. Attacking the center, however, once again, nice uppercut. Still, still doing a fair amount of damage. Now, on the other hand, Cybernetic Pony, a lot of damage will have to be dealt to stop him. But he, he's lost his gate. Oh, he's lost gate tech completely. That's what happened. That's where he got all that money. So it did no good as far as Chrono Porting was concerned. But it got him his money, and that's what counts. Oh yeah, I should also point out that carriers carriers require active comm centers, as well as the aerospace tech. Which looks like that's not being built up yet. Yeah, he's lost that comm center. I guess he didn't really think about it. He had it up here on the corner, and that was one of the first things that Vermine got rid of. So from Vermine's point of view, a small attack trying to stop him, but really, he's pretty solidly taken out the center. And pretty solidly taken out a lot of Cybernetic Pony's economy and main base. It's once again fairly even. Cybernetic Pony, however, once he gets Gate Tech, will be able to push the advantage again. But Vermind has managed to deal damage he needed to deal. It looks like that Chrono Port is not stable, though. Cybernetic Pony managed to stop it with that Tornado. But given that there are the units that he needed in the base right now, or back when the red time I passed over, I'm guessing that Vermind will be ultimately fine. And I should probably point out that it appears that the Unplayable Past marker, or Unplayable Past overlay is not showing up. It was showing up last version, but not for everybody, and apparently for me, it's not showing up now. So everything behind this blue line here is the Unplayable Past. Just to point that out. It, it's not as clear as it normally is. I should have pointed that out in the previous game, but I'm pointing that out now just so that Everyone who's watching is aware. The Envelope Past is everything left of this blue line at the minus three minute mark, or roughly the minus three minute mark. It depends on how much chrono energy a particular player has, where that line will be displayed. Anyway, 
and also depends on the map because this line is actually the propagation line. It's for maps that have it set up where the Impelo Past acts as a time or edge acts as a time wave. And Vermine sending another Corona Port. This time he's going for the much juicier target that's also much harder to break, but it's definitely a juicier target. He's gonna have to stem, send a much stronger force there, but if he does, he will be able to basically take the game from Cybernetic Opponent completely. However, all this Lego Crystal needs to become resource processors. Why is it not resource processors? I do not understand this. It should be resource processors. It should be these. Especially since he has no more Q Plasma income, except here. Almost no more Q Plasma income. And he's likely to lose that too. Cybernetic Pony is set up to attack and has not done so. He has gate tech, he has no gates right now. He has not built any further gates. I'm surprised at this. I don't know why he hasn't built any further gates. He's probably just not got the current energy with which to do so. He doesn't have it right now. Vermind at the 23-22 mark. Preparing for another uppercut. Looks like he did echo out the uppercut that was sent after this base, but probably will send another one once he gets the Q-Plasma for it, but he's nowhere near. He needs to build more RPs. I cannot stress this enough. He has too much liquid crystal, not enough Q-Plasma, and he needs more RPs. Desperately needs more RPs. Building a bunch around here wouldn't be a bad idea. Get a Zion Veer, build a bunch of RPs. Even just teleport these RPs over. Wouldn't be a bad idea. But anyway, 2117 mark. He is going for the North Base again, and it looks like North Base into the main base again, which won't work especially well, since these are not Teth Churchers, they are Shin Churchers. Design Pulsers unable to really do anything because they're getting torn apart by the Tornads. The Shin Churchers are the only hope, and they will be able to take apart the Tornads quickly enough. The Tornads will go down, the Shin Churchers will damage the main base if they can get through this, well, the mech and the turret. That is pretty... that's gonna be difficult to get through. Now at the same time, and this is a 2352 mark when the Corona Port was first sent, Cybernetic Pony is getting rid of that Q-Plasma income. Vermind has no Q-Plasma income at this point. This is why I said build more RPs down here. Down here, or maybe in the middle. Yeah, granted, this map is actually kind of hard to expand on. I'm really surprised this game has lasted this long on Cataclysm Ridge of all maps. This map really doesn't support large games very well. But apparently it has done it well enough. At least, as far as letting the game get to this stage, but certainly allowing the game to have a comeback at this point is pretty much not going to happen, and one of the Shin Churchers is going down, the other Shin Churcher will go down to the turret. There's no question about it. There it goes. Turret taking no damage, and the tank finishing everything off the MFB, making sure that other than the mech, no damage is permanent. So, that was a bit of a failed rush, and I think Vermines might be going for one last shot, one last attempt at this, I can't say I'm holding out too much hope. However, this cruiser, not able to do too much, it's... What am I saying? I can't see what actually is going on since the progress bars don't show up when you're looking at the other player. What's actually happening is a nuke. A nuke is being dropped in Vermine's base successfully too, that's surprising. Nukes are notoriously difficult to get off properly. And even then, moving a bit further forward, getting rid of all these units, and that should basically do Vermind in. Slipkick going down Vermine slightly further in the past. He does have his units better position to deal with this heavy cruiser that... Wait, where is it? No, it looks like he might have... No, he's not rebuilding. That's the heavy cruiser that... Oh, I guess the heavy cruiser died. Okay, so never mind. Summer Pony was not successful in his final attempt, apparently. Or he aborted it completely. Didn't even bother in the first place. And just went for the Twin, twin Mars. Either way... Vermine has pretty much lost his base. The Slipgate's going to be going down... Well, Dip Depot's going down shortly. And this is the power of Twin Mars. This Depot is probably not going to be able to build these units. The, yeah, these units will not finish. This is it. The Depot's down. All those units are down. Vermine's resources done for and really nothing else in play. Vermine looks like he's going to try to go for a Chronoport to deal with this, but I don't think that'll even work. This Red Time Wave carried all of that destruction. He could build another Depot... Actually, no, not quite. He's one QP away. A single Q Plasma away from doing that. And he can't really easily build RPs anywhere on the map right now. Vermind... Actually, a bit further up, he does have more QP. Never mind. He can rebuild his depot. These Twin Mars have not attacked yet, but they will on the next time wave. Cybernetic Pony is still paying attention to this. He is still moving forward. He will still get rid of this Annex, and is getting rid of the Slipgate. Everything we see is happening that will be happening on the blue time wave. And then 
Vermine will surrender because there's nothing really else he can do other than surrender. Surrendering is all he has. But he is still violently getting his Iron Pulsars, trying to use that to get rid of the Twin Mars. It might work. It probably won't. But really, given the resources he has, this is his best shot. Better idea, whoever building foundations further north. And then possibly building those into annexes and depots. We'll see shortly. And the Zion Pulsars, not sure if they're actually going to be built up. Probably not, because that happens further in the future. Yeah, the construction happens further in the future. They are not being built up. These Zion Pulsars can be safely ignored. They are not ultimately going to make any difference in the world. The Vermind... Actually, it looks like he's going to have the Shinveer up here to build those foundations. That's it. That is game. The Shinveer's gone. The foundation's gone. There's nothing left. Although, Vermind jumping back a bit further to see that there is, in fact, nothing left. Confirming that there is, in fact, nothing left. And that is it. Vermind throws in the towel, and we have a game. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And, let's see here. I think I might be able to do another one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I need to do another one. Okay. Actually, let's see. Alright, so I'll be back shortly with another game, so stay tuned.